come, O oh Lord our God. sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now please recite with me the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And we will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And bring us to your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For th though the fig tree blossom not, nor fruit beyond the vines, yet will I rejoice in the Lord and exult in my saving God. And be what is just, for it may be well with them, the fruit of their work they will be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty merciful God. You call us to leave the barren ways of the world and return to you. Give us the grace of repentance that we may live our lives in accord with the teachings of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne stands from age to age. Why then should you forget us, abandon us so long a time? Lead us back to you, O Lord, that we may be restored. Give us anew such days as we had of old. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. He said to them in reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Shalom fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nyek benja pofolonius is thristus. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today from the Gospel of Luke, we hear of Jesus speaking of two historical accounts, which in the Gospel, there are not many things that Jesus gives direct reference to. He starts to tell the Galileans, and of course you have to understand that Jesus was considered himself as a Galilean. And he spent a good portion of his time prior to his public ministry from Nazareth in Galilee. And when he came to John to be baptized in the River Jordan, it was in Galilee. And so Jesus brings to mind to the hearers of two events. Both of the events took place where there was a loss of life, one associated with Pontius Pilate and the other one of the procurer of, of Jerusalem who also at that time was Pontius Pilate. And he gives them a basic message. And it was a message that started with John the Baptist and continued as Jesus began his public ministry. Repent. 
On both of the occasions, Jesus says, But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Repentance. Repentance is a word that is associated with the season of Lent. In the beginning of Lent, we have allowed ourselves to be marked with ashes, which is a, a symbol of repentance. It is our commitment of walking the 40 days and try to discern between what is temporary and what is permanent, what is passing and what is eternal. It is a 40-day reflection in our own personal wilderness of repentance. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, when I think of repentance, I think of the good Lord who gave us a teaching at the Last Supper, and you've heard it before. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him can bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. I am the great I am's of Jesus. We see in today's first reading of the story of Moses who came to the burning bush representing God. And Moses struck with not only fascination but also fear was given a mission to go and to proclaim the living God. What shall I tell the children of Israel? Who has sent me? And what was the answer? I am that I am. And now we go into the New Testament to the personage of Jesus Christ, the great I am. These are the assurances that we as followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ understand that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Think of the eternity of God. Think of all the stars and the galaxies. Think of the smallest of the microbes that exist. Think about all of God's creation. All of that was basically brought and sent by God the Father in the personage of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whenever we celebrate the solemnity of the holy name of Jesus, we say there is no, no other name by which we are saved. My brothers and sisters, on the road to salvation, which takes place during the season of Lent, we are reminded of the importance of repentance. And we are reminded that we need to go to the source. That if Jesus says, I am, the vine. You are the branches. He is saying to us that we need to be connected to him if we are truly to understand our place in the universe and what God intended us as a people to become. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, remember the parable of the fig tree about an individual who planted a fig tree in his orchard and after three years found out there was no fruit. And we hear the story as Jesus continues where the gardener, the person who found the fig tree not producing any fruit, said, so let's cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? We read, and he said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year alone, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may be bear fruit in the future. Who is this individual who says, Sir, leave it for this year also? It is none other, my, Lord, my dear brothers and sisters, than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Think of the prophets of the Old Testament where they came to proclaim God's word, and there it was ignored. 
We see the two examples that Jesus talks about where the people had ignored the word of God. And so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, after the prophets of the Old Testament came to cultivate the ground, to cultivate the spiritual aspect of man. And he says to us, I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. My dear brothers and sisters, a fig tree as any other plant needs to be nourished, needs to be fed by the sun for it to be able to grow. And the fig tree is a representation of not only our search for God, but it is also represents the church. That if we rely and we trust in the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we find that we bear fruit, and we find that this fruit brings all of us unto our own salvation through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. The adventure of Jesus Christus.
Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great congregation. I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you call us to return to you. Receive these gifts which we offer as a sign of our repentance. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, O oh powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. And so, as we commemorate these 40 days of fast, of your horse son may we together with him give you glory therefore we join with the voices of the angels and dark angels with all the saints and the entire church and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory repeating on sea he singingly holy 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 lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our intentions this day, let us pray and remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, 
all those suffering from the COVID-19 coronavirus and pray for their health as well as the wellness of their families. May we give God our thanksgiving for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as for all abused and neglected animals, for all those who suffer violence around the world, especially we remember the people in Ukraine and pray that God would be merciful and might move the hearts and minds of those who create war for others. In our thoughts today, let us pray unto Almighty God that he would send his protection of his holy angels to all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And let us, my brothers and sisters, pray for each other, our families and friends, and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, 
we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same. Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and while safe to grant it peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, prior to the distribution of Holy Communion. For those who will not be receiving today, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
Shing Ming Chao, King Grand Prix to Sun. we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temple gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drawn clean to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have refreshed us through this holy sacrament. Renew us in spirit so we may draw ever closer to you and share in the life of your Son. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which i though unworthy have offered up into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen the lord be with you also a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. 
and he who did accept to me empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor man by man's willing it, but by God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son, coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. celebrated Holy Mass in the morning and no one else was in the church and that at the conclusion they both retired to the sacristy and as they're getting unvested the young priest hears something that's in the, the nave of the church and so he kind of peeked out now as you know during the season of Passion Time, the last two weeks, we have a life-size crucifix that is placed here. Well, this church also had a life-size crucifix, except the corpus was not on the cross. And as the young priest looked out, he happened to notice Jesus was walking down the center aisle. He was looking at the stations, Looking at the stained glass windows, the young priest turns and says to the bishop, Bishop, you would not believe what I am seeing. The bishop had turned, peeked out, and sure enough, there was Jesus walking the center aisle, looking in the choir loft, the stations of the cross, the stained glass windows, and the young priest says to the bishop, Bishop, what should we do? And the bishop says, whatever you do, or whatever we do, look busy. <laughs> and so, we are all called upon, my brothers and sisters, in our own ways, in our efforts, our devotions, our gathering on Sundays and holy days of obligation, to look busy before the Lord. Because again, we remember the words of our Lord and Savior, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him can bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And so let us conclude this morning and offer prayers for not only the living, but also for our departed loved ones. And let us also remember in our thoughts, the people of Ukraine. May God bless each and every single one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, Lord without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. The light of heaven will shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.